everyone, how we doing? Race recap for the first race of the season at Suzuka. It was uh, an interesting one, fun one, and we've got some fun things to talk about. A lot of incidents and um, a special guest as well on board. But uh, before we get to that, we'll just do a quick check of uh, maybe the um, check, quick check of the qualifying. Um, Eddie oh, on P1, Greg in his return race, P2, and myself, P3, um, only a tiny bit back from Greg there, and then Marcus, Yuki, Jason, and Carlos um, bringing up P7, Ludovic, Eric, and Lucas in P10. Um, all very tight bunch. Uh, I think a second covers the top 10, which is pretty cool. Um, and speaking of Greg Olson, he is our special guest today. Thanks for jumping in, Greg. No problem. Good evening. <laughs> uh, it's good, man. It's good to have you uh, back racing in the series. And, and um, it's awesome you could join me for the race recap. And especially considering it was you starting P2 and me P3, and I got to see the rear of your car for the whole entire race. So it's um, plenty to talk about, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't have joined in if it didn't go well, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the worst part of these committing to these recaps ahead of time is like, uh, what's going to happen in the race to talk about? So I've had a few of those ones last season, so I'm glad it didn't uh, go that way this season, uh, this this race to start with. So um, maybe, yeah, do you want to talk about your quality at all how, how did that go for you yeah i was gonna mention that actually but it went pretty good but i feel like i could have been a little bit closer to ed maybe threatened him for pole i think i um i think i nailed everything i had to except for the last chicane on my hot lap so um yeah yeah my first lap was a complete disaster um i think i would have been like fifth or sixth after everyone else's first laps i can't remember what i think i um lost it on the exit of the uh, last corner or something so yeah so yeah, but... you had a one what was it a 140 it was like a 42.3 or something like that just just having a look it was a good. 40 41.5 oh even so, worse so yeah i think that would have put you down in what p10 or so I think from the first lap. Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of surprised with the second lap. It felt good, except I um I lost a tenth in the uh, last chicane. So yeah, probably yeah. probably wouldn't have got pole. Um, so I probably maxed it out. But um, but yeah, I was lucky. I was lucky to get second because um, I mean, we'll see what happens on the first lap. But <laughs> quality is yeah. so important in this series. Absolutely, and um, I was I was similar. I I was. I think I had I actually put in a good first lap though. I think I was provisional pole on the first lap. Um a one what was it? A one forty point nine. So yeah, that was provisional nice. pole. But and I was up uh a tenth and a half on my delta, but going in into the yeah, Casio triangle the last chicane. I just overcooked it a little bit. Um Oh, not overcooked it. Maybe it was a bit attentive, and then just went a bit deep in, into the middle there, and and lost that time. I improved, but only barely. And I, yeah, I think um, it still probably wouldn't have been enough for for pole, but it would have been close. And you never know. Yeah, it would have been really close. Sounds like you could have also. Uh, yeah, I was yeah. trying to eke every little bit out of it, like getting right next to the wall there. But um, yeah, not to be. But anyway, like you said. Um, Quali is so key in this series just to stay out of the all the shit show that usually happens in the mid mid pack. But um, I guess we'll get to that. Um, in terms of start, the, I worked really hard after last season on starts. You you know as well how I fucked up a couple times, and and then put together a um, a bit of a process to to get that in shape, and it it paid off here I think. Um, not that you or Ed had a bad start, but I, I ended up getting away pretty nicely, and that 
because I was in P3, I got the the toe from Ed, which meant going into turn one, we were side by side. Yeah, but it was I, a good start. I have to admit, I, I tried doing the, the new process, but uh, it didn't work so well, so I've gone back to my old way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. The starts, I mean, I, I've I'm had so, sure. so much trouble. Yeah, I'm not sure if um, it's the new tire changes or whatnot, but I did a uh, I did a race the evening before, um, and the track conditions were really bad. But um, I, I tried. I think my clutch bite point was a bit too aggressive, but I basically wheel spinned it off the line. Like I I did two black marks. So I don't know if it's a combination of conditions or maybe the changes they've made to the tire because it feels like it's easier to overheat the surface of the tire um but the starts feel trickier since, yeah since last oh yeah yeah uh, i'm just glad that i didn't sit on the grid with my wheel spinning um and i tend to think here the inside line is better um one it's just safer because people can understeer wide from the inside out so you got to be a, a bit careful but i just feel like you can't take as much speed in the, the camber is a bit greater it feels like in the, on the inside there so i wasn't going to try and hang it around the outside and then i was just more worried about yuki throwing it up the inside of me and um managed to not understeer into me and and that was a big yeah. relief <laughs> big relief there but um yeah, sorry, go on. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, I definitely prefer the inside. Yeah, it feels like you can just... With the, There's just not as much risk. I mean, if you understeer yeah. a bit wide, then who cares? You're going to just bump yeah, off somebody else. Sort of, yeah, you can just sort of just do what you want. So, um, so how, how are you feeling? I, I heard on the broadcast you were saying that over the first few laps, you f felt like maybe Ed was... I don't know, holding back a little bit, just didn't quite have the pace, um, and we could stay with him pretty consistently over those first few laps, I felt, as well. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what it was, but I, I felt pretty good. Um, I was easing into it myself, um, and I I was probably, I don't know, I was probably closer to my limit than Ed was to his. That's that's my take on it. But yep. um, I was also using DRS to stay in his slipstream, so there's that as well. Yeah, and I think I think Ed was just sort of, I think he said it himself. He was just sort of feeling it out, just seeing where I was quicker, where he was quicker. Um, but I think one of our, it's not just my weakness, but um, when Tim came back last season as well, well not last season, last year, um, we seemed to have good initial pace, and then we sort of fall away. So I, I think that might have been a bit of that trend coming back as well. Yeah, look, I I did the the race the day before, and Ed was racing as well, and the first few laps I could hang with him as well pretty easily but then he would just put you know a tenth every lap after that just being able to keep consistently growing the pace and I couldn't keep you know escalating to that degree so I felt that yeah. here as well although you guys got away from me a little bit over the first few laps as well yeah um yeah it's it's tough to say I haven't had enough time with these tires but um I think it is a lot easier to overdrive them this season as well. And I probably did a bit of that, just uh, trying a little bit too hard. Because I actually did a race after this. I did a couple of races after this uh, broadcast race. And um, and without so much pressure to um, you know push the tyres as hard as hard as I was in this race, like I gained a lot of time and it felt a lot better just driving, focusing on driving smooth rather than fast. And a lot of time came to me, so... Maybe there was an element of that as well. Just, just in general, being under pressure, or having someone, not even, you, I'm not sure you're under pressure, but having someone uh, close enough that if you make a mistake, you're going to lose this position, is, is, it just makes a different dynamic. Um, whereas I, you know, you had me right behind you, I didn't have anybody right behind me. You know, it was yeah. almost from lap one, someone was four seconds back three seconds back so it wasn't as much pressure but um certainly over the yeah, first five laps it, i felt you you guys were starting to stretch away from me a bit i was yeah trouble keeping up 
just watching it on on your screen right now, it looked like it was just taking a little bit easy into the Casio Casio triangle, like I was closing up under braking, and um, and at that point I thought, oh yeah, it's on, like you know, I can I can challenge him, but um, I think he's just taking it easy, and I, I can totally get that because like you know, in qualifying especially, it's so easy to just go a little bit too deep to that last chicane. So yeah. I think it was just uh, gauging the grip levels, which were really high, to be fair. Um, and he, I think he just built up to it slower than we did, and um, and he and he found that maximum level of grip quicker than we did. So, um, but until he did that, it almost felt like I had a chance. Yeah, definitely. I'm not sure where it started to. Um, we we started yeah. to lose him. Um, maybe around lap five, I think. Yeah, this is at least looking at your times here. Lap five. He's starting to stretch away a little bit. It's still not too far. Maybe what, what's that? A second and a half. I would Maybe say at that more. point I've uh, probably well outside the slipstream at that point, and I've probably stopped using DRS to try and stay with him because I've, yep. I've anticipated that potentially you're gonna keep up, and I might need them later on. So um, at that point you just let him go. Yep, that's it. That there's no point trying to push too hard. You end up just overcooking the tires, spinning it making a mistake and then you'll lose position so yeah um, and i think i think you might have even started coming back at me at that point so then i was no longer worried about ed and i was worried about you getting back into the slipstream which i think you've probably already done by now yeah it looks close look looking at the um the times here i can see there's you've you've made pretty quick progress into the 42s and then this lap here 43 re I think maybe into um, the chicane here, you've gone a little bit. I don't know what happened here, but um, oh, I had a slide of... in the middle of it. Yeah, 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 that's right. You know what? You know what happened? Actually, now that I think about it, it's something really ridiculous. But I actually got up after qualifying to um, go turn my heater off because it was getting too hot, and then when I came back, I slid my seat back into position one position further forward than what I qualified at. <laughs> yep. So my foot was a little bit more on the throttle and I had to lift a bit more to get, like I had to bend my ankle a bit more back. This is such, this is such a ridiculous explanation, but yeah. I was actually finding it was that I was tending to hold the throttle a bit more than I usually do as I'm supposed to be off throttle. Yep, and and I think yeah. that's kind of caught me out there that I haven't I've gotten on a bit too hard, and I was actually thinking in the middle of the race I should try and slide my seat back to that position, but I decided not to just in case. Oh man, that'd be even worse. You get all the way back and you can't reach the pedals yeah. or something crazy. Yeah, yeah, like but, I didn't I didn't have that luxury because you were right there. So, <laughs> I, and this was when that one little mistake, a little slide, just let me back in to within a second and back in the slipstream so that's when yeah what, once you and once you get in that slipstream it's so hard to break it again um i find here because you've got two long straights um i was losing through the s's like uh, i'm not sure if it was a little bit of aero you know wash probably you were just quicker through there anyway but I would lose time through here, and then I'd make it up back down the straights and back into the uh, the chicane. Um, yeah, I think you were particularly strong coming out of Spoon, which I think we yeah. talked about, um, which is not a good corner to be having trouble out of. But yeah, I think once I'd started that slide, the rears started to overheat a little bit, and um, and it just puts it in the back of your head, especially yep. through corners like Dunlop here. You're like, oh, you know, I don't want to hold the throttle quite as hard going into this corner. You don't want to cook them even more and have a race ending accident that's it it's still interesting that this corner is like that like after lap one it should be flat out and most of the time it is but after you've had a little slide or just overcooked it maybe a little bit um it you can just snap oversteer in the middle of the corner and you can't save it so that's yeah good point i uh, often yeah. confident lift a little bit through there. Oh yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. Always, yeah. I just, I think you probably can take it near enough to flat, but I think if your line is even slightly off, um, yeah, there's a there's a bump in the middle of it somewhere, and this car can, it's just not worth the risk. It's just not. It doesn't yeah. give you the time versus the risk. 
No, you can see yeah, down I'm, there, my, I'm yeah. off throttle a little bit just there, just confidence lift there. There's, the, the time loss isn't worth the race ending accident, like you're saying. No. So, um, so that let me back in, but I mean, we spent most of the race just like this. I, I think <laughs> maybe the closest I got, I think I've noted here, was lap. Thirties or look this lap twelve, and you probably can't hear because I'm I'm not sure if the sound's coming through, but I'm hitting the limiter hitting the limiter about here. So yeah, um, it, I don't I know even if I had a closer run at you, I don't think I would have got past with DRS. So I wasn't even on DRS then; it was just slipstream and hitting the limiter. That makes me wonder if you could have even done it coming out of Spoon if you were hitting the limiter. Um, mm, yeah. It would, the, have, it would have been a lunge. <laughs> uh, it would have been. I did notice that under brakes into the um, chicane there, I was able to brake later, but it was still would have been just such a, a massive lunge that, yeah, I made a mistake. That was actually the lap I made a mistake. Went a bit wide at Spoon. Um but yeah, I'll show you, I, like, co cockpit-wise yeah. on here, I could always, like, sort of kind of close up a fair bit through there. Um, yeah. And it might have been... I ran cambers... Like, I didn't run max, run max cambers. I'm not sure what you run, but it allowed me just to break harder and later, I guess, with less camber. Yeah, I don't run max camber, but... Um... I think I'm just mindful of the fact um, that it's easy to lose a lot of time by breaking too late into Casio Triangle. So yeah. It was the exact same reason I think I gained on Ed in the early part of the, the race. You know, as the lead driver, you just have to be a bit careful. Exactly. It, it's easy for me to judge where you're breaking because I got a reference, but it's a bit harder when you're, yeah, the lead driver. And, yeah, the yeah. implication is higher. You lock up, you have to go straight on. It's, it's sort of worse. Um, but yeah, I, look, I didn't have much for you. I was pushing as hard as I could. Um, and I was saving DRS, but, I, I, you know, I, as we just talked about, I don't think I had enough top end to, to be able to get past you cleanly anyway without you making yeah. some crazy mistake. Um, Whenever you got within about uh, seven, six tenths, maybe even half a second. That was that was usually my cue to burn a DRS. So I was just hoping that you wouldn't get a good run. Um, once I'd burnt them all, I figured I was praying that you'd make a mistake. Basically, I think as I said yeah. in the broadcast. Yeah, and and it did come. Uh, what lap twenty? So it just went on like this, you know, for a long. You started gapping me a little bit there. I think it was sort of at the taller yeah, end I've... of a second. I think that's when I burnt my last DRS. I think um, I sensed an opportunity, so I decided to go for it. And I think I um, tried to really push and put a um, put a gap towards you, like you know, just go for those 100% um, laps where you're really yeah. pushing, take a bit of risk, try and build that buffer, and uh, I guess it worked. Yeah, our times at the end were, were both pretty close, but you did. I could see laps 15, 16. You've put in a 42.5, 42.3, whereas mine was a 42.8, 42.7, then a 42.2. So you put in some bangers and it just stretched yeah. it out. Um, that might have that might have been when I burnt the last DRS. Like you might, I might have sensed that um, you were having a kind of average middle sector, so I decided to just go for it, I think, and um, figured that if you were going to come back at me with DRS, hopefully you'd burn them all by the time you caught me. Yeah, I think... Um, I from I think from 17 I burnt one every lap after that so I yeah. you know what's that five left um, but then yeah this lap 20 this is where I made the mistake um, just pushing a bit hard not thinking and easy to sort of start to get a slide on into T1 um, and it wasn't much but it was enough I, yeah, that's a that's angle. a lot. That's a lot less than I expected. Yeah, it 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 just started to. St yep. I did the old. I'm not sure if you're 
aware of it, but like instead of um, instead of counter steering, I steered into it, and it seems to scrub the front end, and you kind of get a lot of understeer, and it just brings it back a lot quicker. Um, but you can kind of see here, I steer really hard in into it rather than counter steering away from it. Yeah, which wow, is a bit... I've never seen that. I've never seen that before. It kind of looks like you um the the skid you might have clipped a bit of the curb got caught in a little bit of the um ah uh, yeah really a, it's not really a gully but it kind of looks like you might have over rotated from running the curb yeah you're than, right uh, rather than power application because that that should be a relatively safe amount of power like you can you you generally get really good traction through here yeah you might be right like just took a little bit too much of that. Curb and yeah, when I when you were showing the uh when you were showing the chase cam, it did look like your wheels were kind of getting caught down there a bit. Ah, uh, yeah, there you Because yeah, that curb's just... definitely a no go. Yeah, it was right on there, wasn't it? Yeah, that's probably um, what's rotated it. But yeah, there's a little trick for you if you. It only works in some spots, um, especially when you've got a bit of camber to work with, and your rear isn't too far gone yet, but you. Still Steer like hard into it. Oh, wow, just in that's, uh, that's wild. <laughs> induces just a lot of understeer, and then it kind of just yeah. straightens it up. But um, yeah, oh, yeah. if you All the hacks. if you try and counter steer that though, you, you end up getting like a bit of a snap. The You'd opposite probably have direction. a tank slapper, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. So that was lucky though. Um, little little save there. I think it cost a second, and that I mean. Any chance I had then was completely gone, but yeah. So great race, oh. man. Under pressure the whole way. Well done. That's that's yeah, not easy. No, well done. It's not easy to drive that hard for 21 laps. So yeah, props to you as well, because um, I couldn't. I couldn't. I I, I wondered. Um, everyone has their limit, and I was wondering where yours was, and I guess it was lap oh, 20. 20. <laughs> yep, that's it. Which that's is. It. Uh, which is a lot more than can be said for pretty much, I would say, anyone on the grid, other than, uh, than say, Ed, I suppose. If no one else, I would say, has that level of consistency. Yeah, look, it, I do enjoy this track. So um, last season, I did yeah. put in a lot, a lot of laps. It was, again, a, a, a track we started the season on. So I got to spend, you know, a bit of week 13 in the car and, and doing some laps. Yeah. I didn't get to do as many this time. And the setup just from last season worked so i didn't have to make many changes either um yeah but yeah no, but great effort because i did a lot of laps in week 13 here because i thought oh, well, like i'll explore a bunch of setup options and then ended up reverting back to where i started with some minor changes so yeah but, I, but it still gave me a lot of laps in the meantime um so yeah i mean i was not it's not like i came into this race completely out of practice i've done a lot of laps the week before cool yeah, it um, the interesting thing setups, isn't it? Like, I I often do that as well. Start and you get eighty percent of the way there, and then you just tweak and tweak and tweak, and then you wonder if an, if anything's making actually a difference, or it's just maybe you've done a lot of laps now and you're more consistent. Yep. It's it ends up being like that. But um. But I, I think with these tire changes, just getting all those laps in helps you understand a little bit more how to drive yeah. the tire as well. So it's not like it's a complete waste or anything. So. And the, the changes, uh, be keen to hear your thoughts um, on them. They were subtle, but it, it was meaningful still, I think. Especially on the first couple of laps, I feel like it was a lot different than the previous season. Um, I'm really not sure, to be honest. I, I, I couldn't say. I think I only really noticed them in terms of overdriving. It, it feels like it's right. gone back to how it was when V7 was first introduced, where it became very easy to you know slide and overdrive the tire right um, or maybe not maybe not even v7 more like uh i think it was season three 2020 um it was like the last season before they introduced all that extra grip that we currently uh, have yeah. um, so i don't know it's it's something about it though is really it's really making it tricky like you have to be really really precise uh, with your driving now yeah what what i found um, the difference, the main difference that I found from last season was on lap one. It it feels a lot more understeery. Um, I know just going into T1 last season on lap one, 
it was you had to be so careful not to just lose the rear yeah, um so that was the main yeah. difference i felt straight up yeah. i agree but with that a... because our sets tend to be on the understeery side so it would make sense that um your sets now aren't as um knife edge whereas what yep. we had to what i had to do to find pace was uh make the car rotate more um, right than, yeah than before so that that that's definitely sense. something that's changed it's probably the front tires i think that have yeah. changed the most Cool. Well, there was plenty of incidents, so let's let's cue the thing and do the incidents. Nothing, just an incident on the race. So, like all good incidents, they start on lap one. Oh my god! And there was a lot of incidents on lap one. So, um, let's start w with Simon. Um, it was Simon versus. Uh, who we got here? Some poor unsuspecting victim. Um, Gwendolyn Old. Uh, so, yeah, I know. That, <laughs> I, was, I saw actually the name while racing Old, and I was like, what, what's going on? But uh, yeah, Gwendolyn. So I'm not sure what, what the best way to watch this is. Maybe just, uh, just chase camp. Terrible start. A lot of wheel spin. A lot of wheel spin. Um, and always when this happens, you're wanting to make up the positions you just lost. Uh, but this one seems... Oh. Yeah, oh, pre yeah, just pretty damn clumsy, that one, actually. Um, like, Looks Gwendolyn... like he might have want to go up the inside. Just yeah. That's the light gap for the non-existent braking zone, I guess. But mm. Yeah, Gwendolyn was sort of... A little bit indecisive, went wide, but not their fault. Um, yeah, like you said, the non-existing gap starting to it's form. Look, I'm putting it on the person behind. Simon. Yeah, I, it is. It is his fault. Um, but I mean, oh, it's hard to say. I mean, if I was taking that line though at a race start, I'd probably stay out wide. Like I wouldn't yeah. track to the inside like that. Um, but yeah, this sort of covering off there. Yeah, it's a little bit of a line change, which he's entitled to do, I suppose. But you know, and I guess, but I, I still, if I was Simon, I'd probably anticipate that guy chopping down a bit. Yeah, I mean, there's there's nothing really to gain here for Simon. Like, it was no. sort of always going. It was just, it was just clumsy. Yeah. Anyway, not much on that one, but we've got more lap one. Not too far up the road. We'll stick with. Um, oh, not Shane. Actually, yeah. So this was a bit of a own goal, but it it. Um, Is this teammates? It teammates ahead, but not a teammate collision. Oh. So. That's a weird one. Very weird. Uh, like I said, um, last season. You would get these weird snaps like this. Um, it didn't ha hasn't happened as much to me this season, but that that's a weird like he's lost it on entry there. Yeah, it's almost like maybe he's tried to because I some I don't know if I, I can't even remember how I drive this corner anymore. But you might be sometimes inclined to uh, tap the brake to try and get the car the front end to, to bite. Maybe that's what he's done. I, I don't know. But yeah, um, it's hard hard to yeah. say, but. Some unfortunate victims here. Um, we got Jamie missing it, but then scooting across, and really, uh, not much you can do. I mean, he, he had he avoided one accident, and then, yeah. um, unfortunately, Eric uh, was just went straight to the scene of the accident. But Eric Martin have done anything him. there? I mean, from his cockpit view, how much I visibility don't... does he have of that? No, he's going to notice some. You know, he's someone's up ahead. But where do you go? He's coming back on. You're going to take a wider line. But uh she's. He might have, in hindsight, been able to duck through. Let's see from Chopper. Um. Oh, maybe. Look, the person think, behind him. Yeah, I think the problem is is that you've got Miguel also coming in <laughs> from the, the uh, off track. Yeah, exactly. 
Um. Oh, God. oh no. <laughs> It was. I mean, just one. It's it's funny how one little incident turns that's involving no one else just turns into this massive thing yeah. that involves so many people. Uh, and yeah, Miguel, he managed to enter relatively safely, I guess as safe as he's probably going to be able to heading off on grass and everything else. Um, but yeah, for, for the guys coming through, they're not going to know how wide or how out of control someone's going to come and re-enter. How did, uh, how did Miguel end, uh, end up in the grass there? So, so again, avoiding avo- action. Ah, yep. yep. Yeah, a- a- avoiding action as well. So, oh, man, it's a Days of Thunder incident, yeah, isn't it? Where there's is, just uh, nightmare stuff. He picked he's it done, well. He's done well to actually. Yeah. He's got away with that pretty well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Eric's yep. probably not happy. <laughs> no, he's just uh, given the old sly thank you on the the mic there, but um, yeah. Ah, that crazy so yeah that was that one but uh, we're still not done on lap one um we'll go uh, yuki as yuki. as we talked about yuki had a great start uh he he managed to get a position um ahead of marcus but um i think he he was a little bit out of position. I think Marcus probably had a, a little bit of speed on him. Obviously, he qualified ahead of him. Um, in the end, what did he qualify ahead of him? It was a, a ten, almost a tenth and a half on him, so definitely quicker. But I think what Yuki's mistake is here is I don't think he used DRS. Um, I popped it as soon as we went on the back straight. Yeah, I always do. It, you're just too close, and it gives everyone an opportunity, and... Um, actually, interestingly, yeah. Marcus didn't pop it either, but he just had enough speed. And um, I'll just slow it down here. The move was definitely on going in side by side. Some good racing there, but... Um, Isn't there a net code here? See, I feel like yeah. you probably should have given that one up, but <laughs> I, yeah. I guess I have a different view of it. I, I, th- I think two things here. One, yeah, Yuki probably should have just backed out because you know what's going to happen. Your his wheels are. Uh, I don't have the best. Uh, let me get the camera sorted here. Um, whoop, too sorted. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's better. Um, like their front wheel to rear wheel, you always know that the space is going to close, isn't it? going in with someone yeah. else turning in this this one reminds me a bit of uh it's not as bad with the maldonado hamilton accident in 2012 at valencia where uh, hamilton runs maldonado pretty much off the track but maldonado stays in it and basically collects him at the next that's apex. right that's right yeah it's you... a little bit like that but i think you keep mate yeah look i think look, marcus probably could have given yuki a bit of room there because the i think wasn't done yeah, I think so too. I think Marcus w- should have just given room, and even it's if a tough he felt one he... because Yuki's got such a narrow angle for the next corner, he probably should have just given it up. But he's probably, he's, I guess, he hasn't really got enough time to make that call, does he? Like he has to be on the brakes now. It's too late, yeah, really. It is. That's it. Um it's it's an incident it's a racing incident i probably i mean marcus in hindsight should have given some more room here because it ended pretty much ended his race only chance of having a good result and yuki copped a lot of damage from it so they both you know that they both yep. paid the ultimate price for, the, yeah. for it so um yeah there we go the little, incident. Uh, little mistake it was. And then, um, yeah, I, uh, this isn't an incident, but I, uh, Jace had a great run, uh, but again, you could hear he's hitting the limiter and he's just backed out just to be safe. I, I probably would have thrown it on Yuki there, but again, 
it's a yeah. he's got quite a bit of an overlap going there. Um, there is, but he's but, sort of backed out. Yeah, I I can I get I get it. Like it's risky. Yeah. Well, Jace finished the race in P four and Yuki didn't, so he made the right call, I guess, yeah. <laughs> in the end in hindsight. I mean, it was always, so. yeah, it was always going to happen. He's got front wing damage at this point, so um, yeah. it's just the only thing that worries you worries you in that situation is he's got someone right behind him, so you don't want to hang around if you can help it. And yeah, right behind him too, not just yeah behind, but yeah, right up there. And, he's and feeling Carlos. the need to cover there. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Um, we've got a couple more that I'll go on. So a second lap, we've gone, what, three massive incidents in just lap one. This track is pretty notorious for it, though. Um, and then, yeah, right behind him, we've got Ludovic and Morgan. And everybody's kind of... Because Yuki has front wing damage, everyone's bunched up. and it's, this one. Yeah, a bit of a, a concertina effect into yep. the hairpin here um again clumsy it was morgan you know morgan should have anticipated all, uh, a little more that's all ludovic's fault as far as i'm concerned i mean you wouldn't hear me say a bad thing about morgan <laughs> that's it because he is the sponsor of that's the, the broadcast now so i forgot to thank him and so did you and ed uh i know Next time, Morgan. Well, yes, thank you. Next time. So this is not Morgan's fault. Uh, unfortunately, it's Morgan's fault. But, uh, yeah. I thought it broke um, up more than that, from what I remember on the broadcast. But uh, yeah, yeah, it was a little it, bit clumsy. Yeah. It, it was. Uh, again, it's Yuki holding everybody up and everybody sort of checking up, and these things, you know, you're wanting to stay close and. Yeah, like maybe Morgan takes the wider line through the hairpin, but I found that with tyres the way they are now, the best way through this corner for me at least was to keep it really tight. Um, Absolutely. Which is what everyone else seems to be doing. That was something I had to learn, and I changed from Saturday to Sunday. Was I was yeah. taking a wider line, and I just kept losing a tenth every lap. And um, yeah, I noticed um, teammate Jason was taking a tight line, so I started practicing that, and yeah. It hooked up way better, didn't it? Yeah, because it always used to be the other one. Because um, that whole it corner did. is cambered, sort of off the apex a bit more, I think. So kind of, it's a bit of a carousel effect. But um, yeah, but for whatever reason, on these tires, the way we set our cars up, I guess um, that's not yeah. how. That's not what worked for me. Either it definitely down down here was better, and taking it tight all the way around. Uh, was much better, but um, yeah, yeah. it's better for traction as well on the exit because we we're yeah. I, I think we we're all struggling for traction on exit even with these high grip conditions. So the sooner you could straighten the car up, keeping it tight, yeah. um, the, the better, better. It, be. it did. And the unfortunate part here, another casualty is, is James. He's unfortunate. He had he was involved in all these you know incidents of trying to avoid um, cars spinning in front of him. And what, he's just, uh, that's the mid pack. So, yeah, I know. Just caught another one there and uh, trying to do the oh, right thing. That's, yeah. That's I mean, it is. Uh, Ludovic still rolling around. Should just put your b foot on the brake. Yeah. Put brake on. Anytime you're rolling, just brake. But yeah, that was, that was unfortunate. So, lap two. <laughs> Unfortunately, we got to go to lap. Only to lap three to see the next incident. Um. And this one is back on Shane, but it's it's not his fault. Um, so head back down. He's carrying a, a lot of damage after that lap one incident. Um, yeah, you can see the rear wing damage. Yeah, so he's you know, a spit and it's, oh, and he's just got a bit of a a slide on and got rear-ended. Um, Ludovic not anticipating, obviously, the, the loss of grip and just into the back there. Uh, uh, again, just one race, from, you know, things go from bad to worse. And it tends, it tends to what happen, isn't it? When you have an incident early in the race and you're carrying damage or something else, it's just a slog after that and you end up 
in more incidents than <laughs> than not, I think, yeah, afterwards. Absolutely. But bit of a slide, and then, yeah, rear-ended. Oh, dear. All right, we've got, we've got one more incident. There was probably a, a load more, but I only had so much time to go through <laughs> everyone's race. Yeah. Um, yeah, there we were there's some very tight battles in the midfield, basically the whole race long. I think yeah, a lot of that was down to uh, Yuki and uh, Marcos uh, having damage <laughs> and being at different stages of damage in the race. So. That's it. Cause, so you can yeah. see here again, uh, a couple cars ahead. You've got Yuki and, and Marcus as well, still battling there. And then you've got Philip, who seemed quick in spots that Yuki and Marcus weren't so quick in so they were sort of trading spots back and forth and then Hugo would somewhere out of nowhere um, join this pack as well um, and I think yeah the incident's coming up and it's always like this when you've got a gaggle of cars fighting over positions um, remember what happened to be honest oh yeah. sorry it was it must have happened already uh, lap six the lap before sorry but you can yeah, oh, I mean, yeah that is again, the big pack <laughs> that the pack here but um, again heading into the hairpin this similar kind of thing um, checking up Constantina and oh, not yeah, anticipating that's, that's the one I remember. I didn't remember the Morgan Keane one. I, I thought yeah. this one was a little bit more clumsy as well. Yeah, or Not yeah. as clumsy, but just, yeah, you're expecting to accelerate on the exit. and That's just you cool are. Now. So, Philip, I think it's, yeah, had to check up a bit, bit slower. And then <laughs> Dennis has given Philip a little nudge and backed off. And then he's got a big nudge. Um, yeah, the, the concertina through there is not fun. Uh, but, as you said, quite clumsy from everybody there. Um, Love the old McLaren livery, though. It is nice, isn't it? Very nice. Well, that's uh, it's just an incident. We'll do one more thing. We'll After all those incidents, we'll have a look at a, um, a lap between... Uh, Miguel and James on hell, maybe you should be out of race, so we'll call it uh, a motor race. Okay. Yes, it's called a motor race, okay? So yeah, after watching everybody um, and how not to race, we can watch Miguel and, um, and James on how to race. So I've gone a little bit too far, but and give and spoiled it. <laughs> but uh, let's have a look. Lap 15. We got James and Miguel. James got a good run. Miguel. This is I love the overtaking spot into here. Yeah. Um, no, see, around the outside Miguel, there is good. It is Miguel. He's Miguel's. Yeah, so Miguel's left the room, which Marcus should have done. So it's almost identical to that lump, lap one incident here, except yeah, James is a bit further, bit further along. along. Yeah, he is. Um, and Miguel's given him room. James has kept it tight. Um, but Miguel's hung in there, and what's sealed it for him is James has popped DRS, whereas Miguel, uh, sorry, Miguel didn't. Uh, so he's been able to pull away um, and pretty easy overtake. But the lap keeps going on and Miguel sticks with it. And they end up meeting again into that same spot. So getting a good toe. You can hear Miguel on the limiter. Oh, I thought he made a move in there. Oh, that's it. So he. Ooh, that's a big slide. What? Yeah, uh, that's that's. Very, oh yeah, he's gone too much on the curb. Yeah, you can do that. Got, Are we careful? Yeah, he got. It's bottomed out. Yeah, that's that's what I. Got so Miguel, is taking the spot back. 
Oh, it has he. Nah. Oh, James. Oh. Nicely done. He wanted it. I could hear Miguel hitting the limiter, and so James must have had the gear, uh, gear up as well. And there you go. That was good. After all those incidents, it was, it was just nice to see some wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing without it ending up with someone in the barrier. So, there yeah. Was, there was a fair bit of good racing uh, this time around, once the race had settled down a bit, so especially yeah. the mid-pack. I didn't have time to go through and pick out a bunch of other ones, but um, yeah, leave a comment if you were in the race and some good wheel-to-wheel uh, -wheel action. Wouldn't mind going back watching some but yeah thanks Greg for, for joining us uh, it was fun to talk it through with somebody rather than just with myself and it was fun racing with you again man um, so hopefully we get a few more races yeah are you um next week or sorry this week is in Imola uh, are you around or are you gonna no as I told you I'm gonna skip it for various reasons yeah. but um I'm keen to uh, download uh, Fuji and try it out because I haven't tried it out yet um, now that it's confirmed on the schedule yeah I'm cool curious whether it's going to be one of those high downforce or medium downforce type races um, I was kind of yeah. hoping it would be maybe a medium just for something different but I don't know we'll see yeah I, I'm keen to see that too because it's a pretty tight twisty section for that last half but you got that massive straight yeah uh, so. it's um it's a wonder, like, it, will it be a slipstream fest, you know, like a Spa or maybe a Monza? It's, um, you have no or, idea how it's going to race. Or is it going to be like, um, Indy, you know, Indy with that massive long straight and then the bit of the infield section that was always, you know, yeah. a bit of a trade-off between yeah. medium and high. I think it's been so long since we've raced Indy, though, that, um, That's true I, couldn't, too. I, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what Indy would race like now either. Um, no, that's true. Cause it, it, it's think, definitely come yeah. towards medium at Spa now. Like, I don't think yeah. you can make a high downforce setup work competitively. No. Um, but it might, that's the other thing. Maybe Spa will go back towards a high downforce set on this particular tyre. That um, remains to be seen. Is Spa on the, the schedule? It is. Uh, cool. Well, all right then. I think I will be racing this week so um i hope to luck. well thank you and since you're not there i don't have someone hopefully in front of me other than ed potentially <laughs> no i oh, ed last, i don't know last... i think i think the pizza man's been making a comeback i've seen him in the, uh, the results yeah yes. he's Pi you know what Pi uh, last time I, when i checked his account in week 13 or maybe at the start of week one his uh, i rating was back below 3000 uh, <laughs> so maybe he won't make the broadcast, but he's on the comeback yeah. trail. <laughs> I did see, yeah, Pizzica put in some good times at Suzuka this week as well. Um, but yeah, maybe you're right. That's why we didn't see him in the broadcast because of his I rating. But um, I have no idea yeah, he's he Italian, so effort. yeah, um, I think he might see him at Imola. Yeah, I am. Um, last season, um, Marcus, I think, qualified P2 and. Gave Ed a good run for a fair bit, so I, I expect Marcus to do quite well again. And um, I think Yuki was doing quite well last season as well, but he, he messed up his qualifying. Um, and yeah, yeah, we'll see if um, Pinsker is I, I, back as well. You reckon Maybe he might be back? Is, yeah, there could be. Really? We'll see. Have you heard something? Well,. He, I saw something mentioned that he might be back, but I don't know if that's Ooh, just okay. uh, just um, poking the bear, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I feel bad. I feel bad about Yuki as well because uh, watching the Canadian Grand Prix and watching uh, Yuki Sonoda crash at. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, no. And I, Double and, I Yuki. Said, and I said to my wife, I said, it's such a Yuki thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah, poor Yuki's. It wasn't the, uh, it wasn't the weekend for if your name was Yuki. That's no, for sure, unfortunately, no. but they'll be back, I bet. Oh, always, yep. Awesome, man. Well, I'm, I hope everyone enjoyed that, and I did. And thanks for joining, Greg. We'll have to do it again. 
and uh, catch you next time. Take care, everyone. Peace.